Hey, what's good, fellas? My name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at an NBA player who most of you have heard of before, but he went through a very, very scary situation back when he was younger. The player I'm talking about is Marcus Camby. Former Defensive Player of the Year, played 17 seasons in the NBA, most notably for the Nuggets and the Knicks. He was the second overall pick in the 1996 draft, one of the best drafts in history. He probably didn't have as good of a career as some of the other guys there, but he was still a great rebounder, a great shot blocker throughout his career. And he made the all-defensive team four times as well. So, this story takes place a while ago, back in 2001, when Camby was still with the New York Knicks. Camby helped the Knicks win 48 games that season, and the playoffs were about to start. He was a very important piece to that team. He averaged 12 points, 12 rebounds, and over 2 blocks a game, so he was a pretty important part of that team. So the playoffs started, and everything was looking fine, and everybody was ready to go. In the first round of the playoffs, the Knicks matched up against Vince Carter and the Toronto Raptors, in a series that was supposed to be one of the more competitive ones in the playoffs that year. And it definitely looked that way when the series started. The Knicks won Game 1, and although Camby only scored 8 points, he grabbed 18 rebounds and had 4 blocks. However, a few hours after the Knicks won the game, something awful would happen to Camby's family. A guy by the name of Troy Crooms, who was 28 years old at the time, and he had a history of criminal convictions. This guy broke into a house near Hartford, Connecticut, the neighborhood where Camby grew up. The house he broke into was actually the home of Camby's mother and his two sisters. And it was quickly found out that this was not a coincidence. Troy Crooms knew what he was doing and he knew that this was where Camby's family lived. When he broke into the house, he tied the woman up and held them there at knife point. And he would not let them go. Apparently, Crooms was an ex-girlfriend of Monica Camby, one of Marcus Camby's sisters, and unfortunately, Monica took the brunt of the assault. But somehow, they were able to call 911 and the police found out that they were being held hostage. The police quickly notified Marcus Camby of the situation and Marcus lived close by so he drove straight to his mother's house near Hartford. Obviously, he was panicking right now hearing about this. During the drive, he was thinking about how this could have happened and what the hell was going on. So at around 3am on April 23, 2001, the police and Marcus arrived at the house. They saw Crooms holding a kitchen knife to Monica's throat. And there were spots of blood around the entire room. She had some cuts on her hands, some blood running down her head, and bruises all over her body. So that's a brutal image to see, especially if that happened to your sibling. Marcus was shocked at the condition that his sister was in. Anyway, Crooms was holding Monica with a knife at her throat, and he did not want to talk to the police. He only wanted to talk to Marcus, and this whole situation was kinda dangerous and awkward in general. However, the police did not go along with Kroom's demands, so they told Marcus to just stand outside of the house to wait, since they didn't want anybody else to get hurt, even though Marcus was a 6 foot 11 guy. So after about 8 hours of trying to negotiate and standing around doing nothing, Kroom's just gave up. Yeah, that was it. He kept demanding to talk to Marcus, but the police would not let him, and that was basically it. My guess is that maybe Crooms wanted to negotiate a deal with Marcus to get some money, and then he'll let everyone go, cause, you know, he knew Marcus was an NBA player, so he had a lot of money. But it still didn't work out. I guess it works better in the movies. So at around 11am, Crooms surrendered and everyone was let out of the house by the police officers. Monica Camby was rushed to the hospital, got stitches, and the rest of her injuries were treated successfully. She even needed surgery to repair a couple of ruptured tendons and arteries during the struggle. Crooms was charged with sexual assault and kidnapping, along with robbery, assault, unlawful restraint, and the possession of weapons. Eventually, his final sentence was 18 years in jail, and after the event, Crooms said that my heart goes out to the Camby family and I ask for forgiveness. Uh. Yeah, he said he was remorseful of the situation, but the emotional trauma that he caused the Camby family is something that will never go away. As for Marcus himself, he felt awful. You can see it in his face, the anguish that he's going through. He has a feeling of helplessness, of powerlessness. He wasn't sure if he even wanted to show up to the Knicks practice, as they were preparing for Game 2 against the Raptors. This terrible event directly affected Camby's performance on the court as well, which, I mean, it's normal. 
He was not in the right state of mind, and it's probably hard to focus on the game when you just experienced something like that. In games 2 and 4, Camby still played his usual minutes, but he only recorded a total of 6 points and 6 rebounds in those two games combined. He also missed game 3 because he was still devastated, and he felt like that he was hurting his team because he just could not focus. Unfortunately, Camby was not able to recover in such a short amount of time. He was a very important part of the team, their best defender too, but it was clear that he wasn't fully engaged or played with the same type of energy that he usually does. And as a result, the Raptors would eventually win the series 3 games to 2 and move on to the next round, where they faced the Sixers. This was the series where Carter and Iverson were going back and forth, and it was just a great series, but you probably all know about it. That's pretty much it for the story. In the next few seasons, Camby would get traded to Denver, where he would play the best basketball of his career. But this awful event stuck with him for a long time, and it definitely took a while for him to regain his composure. Of course, it happened at the worst time too, during the playoffs. So it was just an all-around bad situation for Camby. Thanks for watching everyone, shout out to BG for suggesting this topic for the video. If anyone has any other topics or ideas that you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment and I might look into it. Maybe. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.